just for a little practice, how would you interpret it if I told you that a wave had a period of eight seconds per cycle? Uh, it takes eight seconds for the starting point to get back to its original starting point. So that would be eight seconds for one cycle. That's right. You can put a one down here and say it takes eight seconds to go through one cycle. third of a second per cycle. Good. So you could interpret it as it takes one second to go through three cycles. That's right. However, it's probably going to be more convenient to just put the whole one third on the top. And then what number do we put on the bottom? And then we can interpret it the way we usually interpret a period. It tells us how much time it takes to go through one cycle. Well, here it takes one third of a second to go through one cycle. OK. Well, people tend to forget what the period is, but it shouldn't be too hard because it's a t per time. But this is the time for what? The time to go through one cycle. OK. By the way, this is not just for waves, but also for any type of oscillation. Um, so last week, you went through oscillations in general. For example, let's say that you have a spring. And let's say you expand the spring, and then you let it go. Well, the spring will compress and then expand, and then compress, and then expand. And if there was no friction, it would expand and compress forever. Well, that's not really a wave, exactly, because it doesn't really have uh, crests and troughs, exactly. So it's not exactly a wave, but it is an oscillation. It is an oscillation, so you could also use this concept for an oscillation, not just for a wave. Um, and you could talk about what's, uh, so then you could say it takes maybe one third of a second for the spring to get back to where it started from. Uh, each cycle, say, if it starts at expansion, at maximum expansion, maybe it takes one third of a second to get back to maximum expansion. Okay, so the period can be used for any wave or oscillation, and it's T stands for time. Okay, all right, then our next concept is the frequency. I'm sure you've heard this discussed in class. Do you remember what the symbol is for frequency? Uh, actually, most of the time we just use a normal F. Okay. Yeah, so we don't have to be too fancy here. Just a normal uh, letter, lowercase letter F. We certainly wouldn't want to use uppercase F because we're using that for force. So we could use a lowercase F. Okay, and I'm just going to tell you the formula. All right, so now I'm going to draw an arrow between these two concepts, a double-headed arrow. And above the arrow, we're going to write how to go back and forth between the two concepts. So above the arrow, we've written that the frequency is 1 over the period. So you want to draw it on your page pretty much like I have it on the board. We have two concepts, and then above the arrow that links the concepts, we'll say how we go back and forth between them. OK, so for example, yeah, all right, so the frequency is 1 over the period. So tell me, what are the units for the frequency? You remember that. Okay, good. There's a special name for frequency. Units are hertz. But what are the component units of a hertz? Um, the distance over the time. Let's think that through a little bit more. Remember that we just saw this formula. We should be able to use this formula to figure out the units for the frequency. Um, so it would be, um, I don't know what the unit of one is. Oh, well, no units. Okay, one no is just units. a number, okay, so there's so no just, units. Uh, one, over the second, one over second, so second to negative one. Good. We know that we could write one over seconds as second to the negative one power. That's right. So this could be written as one over seconds, or it could be written as seconds to the negative one power. Sometimes that's done. I'm not going to do that, but you might see that in your book, so it's important to know that. What is the other way to express the units, though? Because we saw the other units for the frequency were seconds over cycles. Sure. Uh, maybe you're not familiar with the idea that this means we're taking a reciprocal, oh, right? When you divide one into something, that means you're taking a reciprocal so, of it, right? Uh, one cycle over seconds. 
This formula here basically just says that the frequency and the period are reciprocals of each other. This formula is telling us when you say that um, one variable is equal to one divided by the other variable, that's really a way of saying that they're reciprocals of each other. Um, that's what you did here. You said that this unit was the reciprocal of this unit. Um, well, these are the reciprocals of each other over here as well. Okay, and again, in your book, you'll oftentimes see them use this symbol, but I, don't, I think this is pretty hard to interpret. How do you interpret per second? That's hard to interpret. It should be much easier to interpret cycles per second. So I'd actually recommend that you usually use these units because it helps us to understand what the frequency means. Well, uh, let's see if that's true. Um, so let's say that the frequency is five cycles per second. See if you can interpret what that means. What does that tell us about this wave or this oscillation? Um, it takes, there's five cycles for every one second. Okay, good. So the important thing is that you put the number one on the bottom. It's really a lot easier to interpret this if we put the number on the one on the bottom. So this tells us if we wait one second, we will see five cycles of oscillation. So this must be oscillating pretty fast if it goes through five cycles in just one second. So let's say we stare at this point over here. We stare at this point on the wave. Well, if it starts at a crest, if we wait for one second, we're going to count it come back to a crest five times. So it must be moving pretty fast to go through five times. One, two, three, four, five. I can't do it that fast to do it in one second. So this is oscillating pretty quickly over here. Okay. So how would we interpret it if we were told the frequency was 8 hertz? It takes one second for 8 cycles, for 8 cycles to work. In one second, we'll see 8 cycles. So what's the meaning of the frequency? The frequency tells you how many cycles you can go through in a second. Mm -hmm. The frequency tells us how many cycles we go through in a second. What did the period tell us? The period told us how many seconds it takes to go one cycle. So the only difference is who we're, who we're setting at one. In the period, we imagine we're going through one cycle, and we measure how much time it takes. But in the frequency, we imagine that we're waiting for one second, and we watch how many cycles can go by. So for the frequency, we imagine only one second has passed, whereas for the period, you imagine that exactly one cycle has passed. Well, in one second, the frequency tells you how many cycles have happened, and in one cycle, the period tells you how many seconds it took those cycles to go through. So again, the units here really help us to have an intuitive understanding of what, what these things mean. Okay. So how would we interpret it if the frequency is half a hertz? Um, for every two seconds, there's a little... That's one good interpretation. What would be another interpretation? In one second, we would see half a cycle. That's right. And this is probably the more useful interpretation, because then we can compare this to other waves. Um, all right. So this is telling us that uh, in one second, we're going through only half a cycle here. Well, that seems much more realistic for a lot of things, right? So in one second, maybe I can get my hand down to here. But it would be hard to get my hand down and back in just one second. So maybe my hand moving back and forth here might be going through half a cycle per second. Maybe it takes two seconds to go through the whole thing. So if the frequency is 4 hertz, let's figure out the period. How would we figure out the period here? Well, we know the period is the reciprocal of the frequency. Okay. Um, now, uh, how would we interpret this? What are the units on this? Um, what would be? One over, oops, I mean, no. Um, seconds over one, one second over four cycles. <laughs> now, technically, you're right. You could say that the units here are one over hertz, but no one ever says that. That's not that. That doesn't make. That's not very easy to interpret. 
So it's true that the units here are 1 over hertz, but that's not easy to interpret. It's much better to say, to use these two types of units here, seconds per cycle and cycles per second. That shows the relationship between these. 